Hello everybody, uh, let's call this video part two uh, featuring a discussion on the fluid torque drive a powertrain system in my 1953 Chrysler Windsor Deluxe. In an earlier video I posted, uh, it's getting a lot of hits and I get a, a quite a few people trying to um, correct me and claim that the car does not have a true torque converter and I want to just dispel some of that because this is a rare model that does indeed have an actual torque converter. Um, most of the Chryslers and uh, the Plymouths, the Dodges, the DeSotos um, in the earlier years did have a fluid drive only. But this car does have a torque converter. We're going to get into that. Um, I have the, uh, for reference, I have the original 1953 shop manual that covers the Windsor, the New Yorker, the Imperial, Imperial, and the Crown Imperial. So in my earlier video, we talked about how to get in the car and drive it, and how to use the uh, gear shift quadrant and the clutch, and, and how that works together with the torque drive, and how you uh, release the throttle to at certain travel speeds to get a shift from the, uh, the transmission. However, as mentioned, this model actually has a torque converter, which is nice. It multiplies the torque. Let's go to the beginning of the fluid torque drive section. Here we have an actual fluid drive over here. And we talked about what a fluid drive is in the earlier video, but maybe I can show you a sample here in, in the book. This is what a fluid drive does. It's similar to two fans bolted together. And when this side of the fan moves, this is showing air flowing across. It'll actually drive the other fan even though it's not plugged into anything. Well, this is what a torque converter or fluid drive does. It moves oil. As the torque converter spins, it pushes oil over and turns the other half the torque converter. So there's no direct connection between, let's just pretend that this half of the fan was on the back of the engine and it's spinning with the engine. And this is connected to the transmission on this side. There is no direct connection for the power. It goes, it travels through a fluid coupling, which is called either a fluid drive or a torque converter. This is just a simple fluid drive. This half of, the, of, the, of this symbolizes the, the fan on the left side of the photo earlier. It's connected to the crankshaft and it spins and throws oil over to the second half. This is called the, uh, the fluid coupling drive member on this illustration. And this side is called the fluid driven member. So there's no torque multiplication here. It just moves oil and then it goes through. And there is a clutch here. And it's used to disengage power as the engine's running. It removes any transfer of any power to the transmission so you can implement a shift change of the gears. Now let's have a look at well, fluid coupling, no torque manipulation. Now let's have a look at the actual torque converter. Here we have fluid torque drive and hydraulic transmission. This is in my C60 model Windsor, 1953. Here you can see, this is the turbine. We've got a primary and a secondary stator here, and we have an impeller. So as the oil is thrown from one half, as the engine's spinning, it's throwing the oil around and it's hitting these, the other side of the, uh, the impeller here it's called. And then it hits these stators, the oil, and the stators actually multiply torque. So this particular car has an actual torque converter that multiplies torque up to 2.6 to 1. So you get a little bit better response and power from the engine when you're on the throttle. The picture of the C60, the model I have, here's the transmission, torque converter is in this area here, bolted to the back of the engine. The last thing I wanted to point out for people, here's a picture of the inside of the, the torque converter, inside my car here. Here's your turbine, impeller, primary and secondary stators. And there's one more interesting thing that this car features. The engine oil is shared with the torque converter. So as the, um, the oil is pumped by the engine oil pump, it creates oil pressure within the engine for the bearings. It 
travels through a port in the back of the block, seen here in the photo. There's a send right here and a return. The oil comes through the main oil gallery and showing you here going into the torque housing, right into the center of the torque converter here and actually fills the torque converter with oil inside here. And down on the bottom here, there's a drain plug. And when I change my engine oil, I drain the engine oil here out of the rear of the crank, or sorry, rear of the oil pan. And then I also have to turn my flywheel over until my torque converter drain plug is at the bottom and I drain oil from the torque converter. And when I change the oil, it takes about, I think it's 12 pints, somewhere around there, 12 or 13 pints. We're in metric up here in Canada and I'm at about 12 and a half, 13 liters. This shows the return oil. After uh, the oil comes out of this one, we said it went up and in through, it's showing it going uh, through a check ball here, back out to the other side. So there's a diffuser in the bottom of the engine oil pan so it doesn't get foamy. And um, what, what this did is this allowed Chrysler to have um, a longer oil drain interval, because we had about 13 liters of oil in the car engine and tranny, so it could hold more contaminants and um, it would run, it would help cool the torque converter as well and the engine probably run a little bit cooler as well as it circulates through. So I just wanted to dispel, like I said, a lot of the comments that I get about this car not having an actual torque converter. This is a rare model that truly does have a torque converter in a straight six cylinder Chrysler Windsor Deluxe 1953 model C60-2. The dash two means it's a deluxe. Have a good day.